Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is John chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. The Reverend Dr. Mark Raby is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. As Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, the church year comes to a close, and we begin a new one, remembering and giving thanks for St. Andrew, the first called of Jesus' disciples. Andrew, who was born in a Galilean village of Bethsaida, was unlike his brother, Simon Peter. He did not really put himself forward, nor does he come bounding off the biblical page, so to speak, like David or Moses or even St. Paul. Indeed, this reluctance by Andrew to draw explicit attention to himself is why we might even take a closer look at him. To appreciate the quiet, humble aspect of this disciple, it, it may be useful, though, to contrast him to his brother, his bolder, more emphatic brother, the Apostle Peter, who most certainly does draw attention to himself. And it may be one of the reasons why uh, Peter is invariably named first when the original apostles are listed. Now, in the early church, uh, Peter would have been extremely difficult to overlook. Even as you read the scriptures, it's very hard to overlook Peter. He appears in Holy Scripture very much, dare we say, as an in-your-face apostle. It was Peter, after all, who flung himself into the lake and swam toward the risen Jesus while the others came rowing in their boats. On that occasion, Peter was at least swimming this time toward the Lord and not attempting, as he had done earlier, to walk to him on the surface of the water. Peter, in a sense, was the consummate alpha personality. Simply, we cannot overlook Peter. We have much to be thankful, though, for Peter, and that's on another saint's day we might talk deeper. But Andrew, Andrew, on the contrary, appears not to draw attention to himself, but serves entirely as a a conduit for others to come to know Jesus. Even in the scene in John's Gospel, in John's Gospel, which prompts the church to remember him as the one who is called first, it's here where the evangelist recounts, uh, recounts that scene, where Andrew witnesses to his brother, we have found the Messiah. And he then immediately shares his blessing with his sibling and then brings him to Jesus. 
So it's no wonder he was known among the first Christians simply as Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Here we have the bolder one and then the quieter one. But Andrew's character is also manifest elsewhere in Scripture. When the Greek-speaking visitors to Jerusalem approach Philip, and they say, Sir, we, we wish to see Jesus. And what does Philip do? He goes to Andrew so that the two of them might together facilitate a meeting with the Lord. Perhaps Philip felt the need to have this helpful, accessible Andrew by his side. Yet in all the Gospels, there's one scene. There's one scene that most clearly reveals the character or this trait in Andrew of a friendly, relaxed, available person who wants others to know Jesus. And that scene is in John's narrative of the multiplication of the loaves. Of all the New Testament accounts on this theme, only John tells us this special role of Andrew. One of his disciples, John records in John 6, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, that is Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Now, as we hear scripture, or as we might read that scripture, we might be asking the question of the text at this point, how did Andrew know? How did he know that there was a little boy present there who was carrying those particular pieces of food? It is unlikely, after all, that a small boy would be uh, holding seven items and walking around with fish and bread in his hands uh, there that day. The five barley loaves and the two little fish must have been carried perhaps in a sack of some sort. The little boy was part of that large crowd that was gathered there that day that had been with Jesus for some days indeed, as Matthew records. And his mother had packed him perhaps several, several meals in a lunch bag, and by now he'd already eaten most of them, maybe the fruit or the sweets that are there. Those are gone. All the little boy has left in his sack are five barley loaves, possibly a bit beyond their prime, and a couple of salted fish. So how did Andrew know what was contained in this little boy's bag? Surely the answer is quite obvious. He noticed this little boy, perhaps alone, perhaps a little distracted as little boys are, and simply asked him a friendly, in a friendly, engaging way, say there, son, what did your mother pack? What did she pack in that bag for you for lunch? It's such friendly inquiries that we see of St. Andrew and others, where missions and ministry begins. And even from this point, a miracle comes forth. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, the first of Jesus' disciples, who was in a real sense the first home missionary, and the first foreign missionary, Faithful Andrew, who is conduit, connecting others to Jesus. Not just his brother, not just the Gentiles who came, but others so that they might know Jesus. The one who he needed to know as well, the Messiah, who had died and rose for him, a sinner who needed saving. Faithful Andrew, even faithful unto death for the sake of the Lord who, who suffered and died for him, for the sins of the whole world. Faithful Andrew, who was martyred for that faith, and as tradition has it, in the form of an X. And so today, as we do honor the saints, we certainly don't worship them, we don't call upon them or invoke them, but we, as we say goodbye to a church year and begin a new one, the St. Andrew's Day, we give thanks for a faithful witness to Jesus. St. Andrew's Day, which also is that day in which we determine Advent as we prepare then for the Christmas season, prepare for the incarnation of our Lord. Today we give thanks, and we pray that we too may pattern our lives after saints like Andrew, who were faithful unto the end, who pointed others to Jesus. May God grant that we be faithful like him. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.